So, um, the Yankees could have made it 10 in a row. They had an 8-3 lead yesterday in Toronto. Could have swept the Blue Jays. And I'm not saying put a nail in their coffin for the season because there's a lot of time left. Everybody wants to, like, end the American League East. And I have, I have belief that this Yankee team is really good. But I would refer you back to 1978 when the Yankees were 14 and a half games back in August and they came back to beat the Red Sox. So we're only in June. Now, you should feel good about this team. I think this team will win the American League East. Mm. But in terms of putting people to sleep, it's a little too yeah. early to put people to sleep. It's like uh, telling it, the kids at 7, go to sleep, when they're used to going to sleep at 9.30. Yeah, but they're starting to notify the, uh, the siblings, you better get home. The priest has already been notified. They're, it's not good. Because this team is a juggernaut, Michael. There's almost no weakness. And I just don't... They're, they're beating the teams that are chasing after. At least at least the Blue Jays were able to hold their head and say, you know, we kind of played even with you. The Rays, we kind of played even with you earlier in the season. And now, you know, I, I, the Blue Jays certainly can't say that now. The Rays can't. We'll see what happens this, uh, this week. But I know what you're doing, Michael, and it makes perfect sense because you don't want to have to be tagged as the guy that had it over when it wasn't. Especially the Yankee announcer, freezing cold right. take, social media, all that. Oh, yeah. But right now, but Peter, this sucker's almost done. It, it is almost. Uh, listen, people have been served last rites and, and, and rose up, and it's an amazing story, and they make movies about it. Right. But most of the time, <laughs> they just fade away. And that's what's happening that's right. with the Rays, the Sox, and the Blue Jays here. The Yankees are just a machine, and it's just not going to happen because I don't really see – any of these teams pulling the Braves either. I mean, look what the Braves did. They won 14 straight games to be able to climb close to the Mets and then ended up taking a step back, step forward, another step back again. It's it's close, Michael. It's really close. Oh, it's, it's close. It's, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're not in a great position. They are. And, you know, the, the Blue Jays start today 11 games out. And they're closer to last place, Baltimore, nine games, than they are to the first place Yankees. So they built themselves up a great lead. So they, they're allowed to have a little bit of a lull. That lull didn't start yesterday. The thing I liked about it, they blew the lead. Um, Miguel Castro, who's got as good a stuff as anybody in baseball, just can't harness it sometimes. So he gives up the grand slam, and then Wandy Peralta gives up the three-run home run. Get it. Luis Severino uh, was not at his top. And still managed nine strikeouts in in five plus innings. I get all of that, but last out of the game, they had a chance to tie the game. Yeah, with Rizzo, they didn't give up once they fell behind ten mm eight. -hmm. Rizzo with a pinch hit home run, and then they had first and second. Rizzo up with two outs against Romano, and they so desperately needed that game, the Blue Jays, that they brought in their closer to get five outs. He had not had a four out save all year, and he did it. And good for them. And it gives them credit. I give them credit, too, because even on the air with Paul yesterday, when it was 8-3, I said, you know, the Blue Jays look defeated right here. And they fought back. And that's what good teams do. They'll make the playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs. They're going to be dangerous as a wild card. But, um, you know, the Yankees had their nine-game winning streak snap, but they, they still won 16 out of the last 18 games and nine out of the last 10. They're in yeah. pretty good shape. See, see, this is not 78 where if you don't win the division, you're not making the playoffs. These teams still have a lot to fight for because even though it may not help them beat the Yankees out to win the division, they're still in a race for the wild card. So nobody should just give up because there's always still reasons to play. But as far as the Yankees, and you said it's not a lull yet, it's one lousy game, and they still you know, had a chance to win that game in the ninth inning. We, we were looking at what they could be over this 20-game span with how tough the schedule was going to be. And right now, through the first six, they're 5-1. and one. That's pretty good, Michael. And you had the best record of them all. I think you had 14-6. and six. No, 13-7. Yeah. Well, Al, 13-7. and seven. You almost want to take it back at this point. I mean, you, you got five of the 13 already. I mean, and, 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 and the Mets, too. We were looking at the Mets' June uh, slate with how tough those games were going to be with all those games against uh, the, the Dodgers and the Padres, and they've got the Astros four times coming up, and, and, and not bad. So far in June, the Mets are 10-7 and seven with a chance to go 11-7 and seven if they can hold on to this 4 nothing lead in the bottom of the eighth inning. So both teams are answering the bell. Embrace it, people. Embrace it. You've got two of the best teams in baseball. And an interesting column today by John Heyman in the Post, you know, that the teams are closer than you think, the Yankees and the Mets. Well, it's only, what, five off, four off? Well, the Yankees are, what, 20, what are they, 30, yeah, the 32 games over 500, the Mets are 
like 20 games over. So right, but but as far as like the I, I'll, I'll look at it right now. The standings, like the wins, the Mets have 44 wins and the Yankees have 49. So it's 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 about five off. And the Mets might get Scherzer back this Sunday well, against Miami in Miami. That's and the plan. In, and Degrom back at some point, you know, and you and. So, uh, listen, I'm, I'm not competing against the Yankees. You know, we had a caller on Friday. I'm jealous of the Yankees. Why would I be jealous of the Yankees? I'm in first place, too. You know, it's just fun for us on sports radio in New York to compare the two teams. But right now, I'm more focused on what the Braves are doing, what the Phillies are doing, and making sure this team can hold on to their uh, what, the, what I hope to be, be a six-game lead by the end of today. Uh, that, that's my hope. But right now, it's just fun to look at. I, I said two of them. They, these might be the two best teams in baseball, and, and the stats show they are. Dodgers the, Dodgers, are of, the Dodgers had the, are str they're only a half game up on San Diego and spent the weekend in second place. And Mookie Betts is out with a broken rib. So they can really fall. You know. And Houston's Walker very Bueller's good. out. Houston has joined the 40-win club. And uh, both the Yankees and the Mets will get a heavy dose of, of the Astros coming up soon. Am I am I a child? I mean, I am really excited for the four game set against the Astros starting on Thursday at the stadium. I mean, I'm really looking, looking forward to it because the one complaint about the Yankees that is that's really gotten them on night, they really haven't played anybody. Really? So they sweep Tampa Bay. They go into Toronto in front of essentially three sellout crowds. They take two of three within one out of sweeping. And now they're going to have three games against Tampa Bay tonight, starting tonight, and then four against the Astros. So wh who do they have to beat for people to shut up and stop well, saying, you know, they haven't beaten anybody good? Maybe there aren't any teams even as good as they are. Well, I, I really, you know, the, if you want to discard the Rays and say they're different, and they are, and they've lost a lot over the last couple of years in free agency. And if you want to discount the Twins because they're the Twins and they always seem to shrivel up in front of the Yankees, and if you want to say the Blue Jays, what have the Blue Jays won? What are you going to say about the Astros? All right, that that that's a legit team. But you know what? So what? Let, let, let's say you lose to the Astros, Michael. Is that the end of the world? You might not also, even have to face them in the playoffs. I mean, who knows? That's where it's going to matter the most. But right now, there's only one team that I even think is in the stratosphere of the Yankees right now in the American League. That's the Astros. Is that the Yankees' fault? And also, when you say Toronto... Most quote-unquote experts oh, took Toronto to no. the East. The We're, Yankees have won eight of the 12 games against them. So that's not enough of a litmus test. Talk about getting it wrong, Mike. So, now, so Donnie, the, the Astros, like they play them, you know, four games this weekend. If they sweep the Astros, what's the next thing that the doubters are going to say? No, then, then we will officially Then you got move, nothing. You got nothing. We, no, then we, we will officially move on to, let's see what they do in the postseason. No, no, no. Let's see what they do against the Mets. Oh, When's the Mets series? Um, they're two separate two uh, two game series. Uh, one's right. in July, I think. One's in August. It's it's starting to get though, D Michael. I would just imagine if for you it's going to start getting to the point of of fun, j just to be processing the level of history that this could become. I mean, I think the all time greatest major league win percentage is seven sixty three. The Yankees are at seven forty two right now. So it's just going to become a night-to-night -night thing, Don, of, like, how good is this yeah. team going to be? July 26th and 27th at City Field. And then 23rd, 22nd and 23rd of August at Yankee Stadium. And, I mean, if, if I've said this many times, so I don't want to uh, repeat myself too much. If, if we get to August and both of these teams are the level that they're at right now, and remember, the Mets could be up a whole level. If, if, right. if Scherzer and DeGrom are themselves, then we could be talking about the Mets in terms that are close to what the Yankees are. Could you guys imagine that path? No, it's it would be, it would be it's an never incredible. Been. I mean, even like, 2000. The 2000 was nice, Peter. But I think the Yankees won 87 games, if I'm not mistaken, Michael, in 2000 because they, they ran away with things and kind of just mailed in September. And the Mets were a wild card team. So it was nice to have them both play for the World Series, but as far as, like, that epic summer is concerned, you know what we were robbed of it, Michael? Because um, I, I was reminiscing about it reading the Ricky book. 86. That 86 Yankee team was good. They won, what is it, how many win games did they win? Like 90-something. You, sure, you sure? The 87 Yankee team was really good, too. But there, there was no wild card, so it didn't matter. Right, right. I got Yankees were yeah Yankees were in in eighty six and I'm sorry in two thousand eighty seven and seventy four, and the Mets were a wild card at ninety four and sixty eight. 
two respectable years. Potentially nothing like what we're going to see this year. Now, one quick note on the net: uh, the Mets, Jeff McNeil dealing with right hamstring tightness, and he exited.